Time to take a closer look at what's making news in print and online. And we're joined from Glasgow by Ben Oquist, the executive director of Think Tank, the Australia Institute. And you were in Rome as well, weren't you, Ben, for the G20? And now you're in Glasgow. So you are getting a, a front row seat at everything that's been happening, including this incredible row between Emmanuel Macron and uh, Scott Morrison. Mm. Yeah, it's been a very interesting, to say the least, uh, trip from the Prime Minister, hasn't it? And um, this story is across all the front pages of the paper. Um, the French president essentially cu accusing the Prime Minister of lying, and in particular, basically a story broken by uh, Bevan Shields from the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age when he put the question to um, the French president on the sidelines of that G20 summit in Rome that you mentioned um, and um, asked whether the Prime Minister had deceived and Macron basically said um, he, he wasn't unsure about it. He knew that the Prime Minister lied. And this is across all the front pages of the paper. It's completely, of course, overshadowed the Prime Minister's uh, trip. And um, David Crow writes in, inside the Sydney Morning Herald that basically this is unprecedented. And a lot of talk here in, in Glasgow um, that um, there hasn't really been a uh, such a disastrous overseas trip um, by a Prime Minister that, that people can remember, certainly in modern times. And it's even overshadowing the fact that um, the, the Prime Minister has just, just in the last few hours spoken here at the, the Glasgow Climate Summit. In, indeed, uh, really strong stuff. Uh, and uh, we could tell watching that media conference the Prime Minister was angry. He said he wouldn't stand for, for sledging of Australia. But uh, let's not forget that uh, Emmanuel Macron seemed to be directing his anger purely at the Prime Minister, Ben and not Australia. He talked about how he respected the Australian people, how he respected the Australian people. He talked about how Australians helped save France uh, in World War II. Um, so it's a, you know, a, a very interesting, uh, I guess, comeback line from the Prime Minister. Yeah, there has been some criticism of, of the Prime Minister for essentially um, suggesting it was about Australia and, and not about him. Um, when, when, as you say, the, the French president was very clear to, to say it was about the prime minister and he, and he respected Australia. Also some criticism of the fact that some of the text messages between Macron and the prime minister have been leaked to the press and leaked to the press back in Australia, not to the press pack travelling with the prime minister. Um, uh, all that is causing some angst because um, it's one thing to have a, a, a row with the foreign leader, but then to start leaking um, private text exchanges. Yeah. Is, is creating a storm. And as David Crow points out, the Prime Minister had tried to control this, but it's really become uncontrollable. Um, and uh, he speculates in his opinion piece that it's now beyond just the relationship with France. It's a, it's a test of the Prime Minister's credibility. Anyway, one thing is sure, it's completely overshadowed the trip. And I think everybody is, is describing it as a, as a bit of a, a, a disastrous trip now for the Prime Minister and, and certainly um, a, a diplomatic one. Mm. And, I mean, just also adding to that, because it was sort of... Um, uh, the weight also came from the fact that the US president had described the uh, conversations as clumsy. So you had both these leaders sort of um, weighing into it. But what it has done, you're absolutely right, is going into this summit has made the G20 not look like a cohesive... Um, powerful group that can try and get things done and the AFR has certainly gone with that on page one. India, China, Russia killing the climate deal but it was sort of more than those three in a way wasn't it? Yeah that's a front page story from Philip Khoury um, and the uh, Financial Review's um, European correspondent Hans uh, Van Leeuwen, and they suggest that um, Britain and the United States uh, have accused India, China and Russia of uh, essentially undermining Glasgow. But there is a key in the second paragraph of, of this story where they um, say that Australia sided with those big countries um, to essentially block a, uh, a phase out of coal with clear targets. So um, on the one hand, those big emitters are being accused of um, causing the problems here at Glasgow, but the story points out that um, the Australian government's been siding with them and there has been criticism of Australia, and although it's the Prime Minister, of course, has adopted net zero by 2050, that Australia hasn't come with a, a near-term target um, and has actually come to cop with big, big fossil fuel expansion plans, big plans to build new coal mines in New South Wales and the Adani mine and the big gas field developments that some people say could be the equivalent of 
46 new coal-fired power stations. So all in all, yes, th those diplomatic problems for Australia on climate change have been overshadowed um, by the, the stoush with uh, Macron. Uh, but uh, um, Morrison's still here for a, a, another day or two. As I just said, he's just delivered his speech to the COP. And I think uh, there will be some renewed climate pressure on Australia. And, and even since this story has been written, um, India has actually come forward with a net zero target, although only net zero by 2070, not 2050. But it is a move from India and there's been moves from Brazil. So there's some signs of um, uh, international movement that I think will put more pressure on Scott Morrison in a, in a difficult trip. And uh, I guess adding to the pressure uh, are some of the very passionate speeches we've seen so far at the summit, including, Ben, the one from Boris Johnson opening the conference. Yeah, there's, um, uh, there's been some big pleas by Boris Johnson. You, you wouldn't be surprised to know that it's across the front pages of many of the papers here in Glasgow um, and, and across the UK, some, uh, some bold pleas by the Prime Minister, uh, Boris Johnson, to um, tell world leaders that they have to step up their action, that um, uh, uh, he's worried that um, there's only a six out of ten, as he put it, chance of the conference succeeding to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees, to get commitments from countries that would lead to a 1.5 degree only rise in, in global warming. And he's put put it very starkly on people that really, if you know, if Glasgow fails, as he puts it, the whole thing fails. Uh, and he, his words are featured prominently across many papers, in, in, including the, the local ones here in Glasgow. Ben, thank you so much. You're going to have a busy couple of days. Really good to speak to you from Glasgow. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Michael. Thanks I, for having me on. I love how the planet is literally sitting on your right shoulder. No pressure. <laughs> no pr <laughs> <laughs> well, well it, it, it really literally is a, a meeting of world leaders to yeah. try and save the world. Uh, it's, it's not an understatement to say that it is all on the line and there is a big pressure to come forward with plans to actually tackle emissions this decade, not in 2050, to get off fossil fuels right away. And the UN Secretary General is saying that we need to end coal, particularly for developed countries like Australia, yeah. this decade, uh, not in the distant future. Lots at stake. Uh, ben, as always, appreciate your insights. Thank you.